I don't need to be a separate country to be a Scotsman. My identity is fairly strong. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, everybody. It's Laura here with the Midlife Traveler podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We are in season one, which is about Scotland, and we're learning about Scotland through the voice and the opinions of a Scotsman named James. We're covering topics such as things like the bagpipe, the kilt, whiskey, and also moving in to explore some more modern day topics such as opinions on Brexit, the British royal family, and I've also got a hilarious bit about the comedian Trevor Noah and his observations when he visited Scotland for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So today's episode is about Brexit, and you're going to hear from James as he describes how he very, very first learned of Brexit when he returned back to Scotland after being out of the country and working abroad for a while, and he really talks about the difficulties of obtaining replacement agreements, the negative impact to financial trading, which had honestly never occurred to me, and also a broader cultural impact to the entire younger generation who could face travel restrictions within Europe if Brexit goes through, if and when, if and when Brexit goes through. So like others, this is a field recording. It was taken while driving. And on that particular day, I was not on a a private tour discussion. So the woman who was sitting right by me was so engaged in his story that she's laughing along and she's agreeing to points and just sort of making small conversation that you'll hear in the background as he talks. So um, without further ado, here is James and his thoughts on Brexit. Enjoy. So when I came, I'd spent a few days in Edinburgh, and then I went up. I went up to my parents' home to catch up with them, and the, the brothers and sisters came round to catch up with me and the rest of the family. So I've got up in the morning. I can hear the, my two brothers at the breakfast table arguing and arguing, going on about it, and going on about it. So I went through the kitchen. I says, "What's going on this morning?" What, what are you not making? She went, what are you talking about? She says, the boys are arguing about breakfast. What are you not making? She went, Brexit. <laughs> she said, what? She went, Brexit. So what's that, like a new type of cereal or what are you talking about? <laughs> she was like, we voted on leaving the European Union. This was my reply. This is how terrible I am. I went, oh, when did we join? <laughs> so... To be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea. Um, The Brexit thing was a complete shambles because all the MPs that encouraged the people to vote yes after it went, oh no, 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 no. What we told you was rubbish. We just told you lots of lies to oppose David Cameron because we didn't think you would vote yes. They should have all been in prison for fraud. They're MPs, they take a responsibility to inform people of the truth. As you well know, that's exactly what MPs do, right? Um, Brexit, I don't know. Is 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 it wise in this current state of affairs to start breaking ourselves down into smaller communities and smaller? Yeah. Um, And then what's going to happen is that if Brexit actually happens, then it means Nicola Sturgeon will whip out Article 52 which means that we get another re-vote for Scottish independence, which if we get that, we will then vote to rejoin the Euro. Yeah. I, I just, there's too many votes. It's been going on, it's just too much to go on vote-wise. I would just like to see Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales coming to some kind of realistic formal agreement and then just sticking to it. I don't need to be a separate country to be a Scotsman. My identity is fairly strong so I don't need it for that Brexit will benefit 
some of the people in Britain and it won't benefit others. Staying in, in the Euro would continue to benefit pe some people in Britain and not benefit others. It's just, it, it, there's going to be somebody that's going to get kicked out of the pram either way. Um, the Brexit thing will be very, very hard though, guys. Canada, maybe the Canadians are on the list, Canada has been trying to get agreements to trade with the, the Euro for about 10 years now, yeah. free trade. And where it's, the agreement has been yes, yeah. but the reason, it's, the reason it takes so long is when you make one agreement with one country, you then need to write that other agreement in 27 different languages and have it agreed by their 27 di different countries. So that has to be done 27 times, times 27 times. And every time there's an issue with the agreement, it has to be re-addressed, re rewritten, republished and sent out again. So what, what I'm concerned about is what is going to happen with our trading within Europe, even though it's, you know, it's okay because we'll write up these dossiers, but for how long will that take? The biggest issue is for traders, anybody that trades at the moment, if you are, if, whether it's in with meat or whatever, whatever you're trading in and around Europe. Because currently, we have one... So when we trade, we trade through... Or most of us will trade through Lloyd's, traders. Now, they have one insurance broker that covers the insurance broker for the agreements under the EU. Because we want trade to be done in a matter of milliseconds. So, because prices can drop and change. But now, Lloyd's, the broker, will have to get the... He will have to get insurance brokers from all the different 27 countries to make agreements. Now that could take 20 minutes, 30 minutes during which the price has changed 5 cents, 10 cents, which doesn't sound like much, but if you're buying it and it's billions, that, that, that's huge amounts of money. So the trading might be a bit, a bit of an issue. I would feel pretty bad for, for the young generation if we Brexit. I worked in Spain, I worked in Madrid, um, worked in Poland, worked in France, um, freely, freely, just got on a plane, went, got a job. That would all now be visas and restrictions and borders and and it's been quite nice to be able to travel freely through Europe and get the experience of the European countries and working and culture and I just I think that that would be a shame for you know, perhaps my younger brothers and sisters that might want to do that, but they won't because they're lazy.